This is Mario with MIA Microflight once again and uh, in this video I'm going to be showing you how I'm doing the battens for this uh, sail, Tyvek uh, sail. Battens are strips of uh, PVC. Um, these are edging or finishing strips. Uh, they got a great degree of flexibility. You notice that how I'm flexing this and it goes back to the same pretty much the same shape. So this is great stuff. It's a quarter inch in thickness by seven eighths in width and they come in eight foot so sections. Here's how this uh, works here or at least this is the way that I designed these things. Now you can simply just cut some pieces and install them and they'll be flexible enough to give your uh, sail uh, the camber, you know, curvature, but it'll be an even curvature. Now, what we want to achieve here, or at least what I want to achieve here, is I want to achieve an airfoil shape, uh, natural airfoil shape, shape by the pressure of the wind. And in order to do that, we have to get a little creative here with this material. So, what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be cutting two, two equal lengths here. This is going to go in this second button. This is the first button from the top. Actually, there's a diagonal one that I need to pocket that and put that um, same material here. So I'll be cutting a, a section there. But for this one here is a is a reference or an example. I'm going to be taking two of these pieces here cut. Now I've cut this one. It's about between two and three inches away from the edge here, and this is just to give it a little more room in case I want to tension this against the sail, you know, with a couple elastic straps here. But I don't think I'll be doing that because this will sit pretty nice and snug there. So what I'm going to be doing is taking two of these pieces here and I'm going to be sandwiching them one on top of the other. Now this has a nice uh, bevel on the sides and if you sandwich two of them you get a very nice smooth surface on both the top and bottom when you join the two. Now once I take the two pieces here what I'm going to do in order to achieve the uh, airfoil, natural airfoil, is I'm going to glue this from this end here I'm going to glue about two-thirds all the way into the into the band here and I'm going to leave these two sandwich pieces floating and what I mean by that is when this is when this is glued the section that is glued is going to become rigid so the trailing edge of the batten is going to be more rigid than the leading edge of the uh, batten which uh, is closer to the mast so this this part right here will be floating and it'll flex itself notice when it flexes let me flex it here oh, I can't see it with this camera very hard to tell here okay so when they're equally uh, uh, joined and you allow two pieces to flex one side is going to it's going to slide on top of the other side notice how there's a quarter inch offset there when it slides so this beca because this is flexible it's not glued so that's how I'm achieving the, the uh, airfoil curvature using these uh, uh, PVC sections here for battens so I'll be doing that to one two three four uh, four battens that's all this sale takes okay let me talk about some of these parts that I 3D printed here for this uh, project. <clears throat> I was going to get grommets, regular grommets that I use for tarps and for sails, you know, the metal type, and uh, install them in these all these holes for the uh, tensioning of the sail. There's a couple more at the top of the sail. That's the one at the uh, front end of the foot. This is the rear end of the foot. So I couldn't wait to get the uh, the grommets, so I decided to 3D print some, and here are the pieces that are going to go there. Two of these are going to be clamped one on top of the other like that, and these parts are fairly strong. I mean, the plastic I'm using here is ABS, so it's very, very uh, strong uh, material, and they're going to be bolted here. With uh, This will probably take uh, 632 uh, uh, screws and uh, some uh, nylocks, so it'll be a nice clamp there so that's how I'm doing these grommets here 3d printed grommets um, the other thing I'm showing here is uh, this was the uh, first um, pulley system that I was planning on employing here but it came out a little too big um, as far as uh, 
forces acting on this. I think this would, would hold it very, very well. This one is on PLA, by the way. Um, but I was planning on doing this one in ABS. So uh, I didn't I didn't like the size. It was it's just a little too bulky for my taste. So what I did is I redid the uh, pulleys. Now, I was thinking of using half-inch uh, polyline here, or... Um, sail uh, cord, I guess they call it a real sail boat cord, which is a you know, three-eighths uh, of an inch to a half inch, I think. Um, it's a little more expensive than the poly line, but it's the, you know, the real stuff, the, the right stuff to use. But anyway, going back to these pulleys, this was done for a half inch uh, poly line, and it's got the uh, it's, its size so that it'll hold uh, two uh, skateboard bearings. I did a couple of those, and I was like, nah, I don't think I, I want to go with this big of a, of a poly line. So I went back and uh, redesigned the uh, the pulley, and I made it also a little bit wider. This is uh, smaller than the yellow one here, and it's also thinner in the uh, at the top and in the bottom. And we don't need to go that thick here with the, with the pulley, so I thinned out the, the wall of the, the uh, top uh, and bottom sections. And I installed on this one two uh, skateboard bearings. Now these are the standard skateboard bearings. And I can use, you know, standard, uh, I think this is 5 16 um, bolt hardware. So this is how I'm going to be doing the uh, the pulleys. I did order a, a set of them, but until I, I get them, you know, it's going to be a little while. So I decided to just crank these pulleys. And, and all I need here is just uh, the brackets for the plates. They are going to be uh, supporting the, the pulleys. These plates now, I'm going to do the plates in 8 inch thick fiberglass and I'm going to just CNC cut those, a bunch of them in you know, no time. And I'll have my, my pulleys. So I wanted to cover this as well and just show you what I'm doing here with these uh, 3D printed parts. So I have stuff. taken this uh, a bottom batten, what's going to be the batten, because I haven't cut it yet. But this batten is coming out at about 50, uh, about 52 inches with a little excess here, two inches uh, additional for, uh, for attaching a, a tensioning cord there. But I've attached tape here, double-sided tape, to the three-foot mark, which is right here, and I'm leaving this section floating. Now this is going to be actually the front once I cut it. In this section here with the tape, the more rigid section is going to be towards the trailing edge of the sail. So I'll be doing that to the uh, bottom, the second, the third battens. I just want to capture this in video and just show you how I'm doing this. I have double sided tape the first three feet for 36 inches. This is a 54 inch uh, batten, and this right here has to be cut, but this is going to be the front end of the batten. Now let me show you how this works. Because this is tape, the section has become more rigid than this side here, which does not have the tape in between that sandwich and is able to flex. And notice how this batten stays rigid at the, towards the trailing edge and it curves towards the front. So that's uh, basically what's establishing the airfoil here, and that's what we want on this uh, on, on a batten shape. I do this kind of similar ideas, I do that for my radio control micro lights. Uh, of course, I'm not using this material, but I'm using something else. And if you purchase one of those, you will see my, my little tricks there. What I employ, you know, to get the uh, the curvatures there, or, or the proper uh, camber, you know, on the wings. But kind of similar idea here. So that's one batten. I need to go cut it, and I'll complete the other two, and I'll come back to this video. Uh, the wind is really picking up. I hope I can do this quickly so I can mount the sail again and get a, another. That's right. Uh, anyway, going back to the batten here, I double side taped the uh, sandwich up of the uh, these two pieces here, but it wasn't holding that well, so I added a bit of uh, packaging tape, 24 inches times two strips, and just wrapped it lengthwise so it holds. Now it's holding nice and nice and tight. I don't think that's what I've done. We're getting the airfoil, still getting the airfoil there. Rear section of the batten stiff, front portion of the batten flexible. Alright, I'll finish the rest and come back to this video. Here's the sail with the battens, the new battens. It's working very nicely. I 
level should be able to see the airfoil here in a minute. Hopefully I can capture it while I test drive it again. So stay tuned. Let me go get my head cam and record. Let's exercise the legs again. Alrighty. Ah, the mass is still flexing too much. Yeah, it's because I don't have the reinforcements. And once I get the... Okay, let's look at this side here. Yeah, it's got too much flex. So once I get the mass reinforced double ply, it'll be fine. And we are moving. That uh, angled batten is right now just a fiberglass rod. I need to put a pocket there for the PVC type batten that's going to replace that. But I was in a hurry here right now to just to get some of this air that we're getting so that I can test this. See how it's forming the airfoil? Just a little bit there. See how yeah, with a more rigid mast, that airfoil is going to form a little better. Well, that's the purpose of these tests, is to find out where we need to uh, refine it. But once this video is done, once this project is done, I think people would have a good idea as to uh, how to go about this. And It's not a hard project as far as making the truck, it's not very easy. They say also it's very easy and you, and you can use a tarp even. You know, just a, one of those uh, 10 mil thick tarps. Uh, make sure your, your mast is uh, doubled up if you're going to use this mast that I'm using here, the pool poles. Which by the way, Home Depot does not sell it direct. You have to order that online and they can either ship it to your home or you, they can ship it to the store and you can pick it up. But it is the mast that I'm going to be using because it's the least expensive most most cost effective way to to go uh, let's go sail in my backyard <laughs> so when there's no wind I have to use my legs which is uh, I think it's good that I'm doing this again because were killing me this morning. My inner thighs, all the muscles have not been worked. So I was in pain. But this should, this should help me out. Keep those muscles flexible again. Slowly again, but moving still. Okay, this is gonna get old here, going around in circles. I'm going to need to finish this and go take it out. That's the problem I have even with the radio control ones here in my back area is these walls. There's plenty of wind. But it comes and goes. Inconsistent. Come on. I don't have the grommets here, can you tell? But I heated this hole here. I took a soldering iron and just poke a hole right through it. It's got kind of a self reinforcement there, even without the, the grommet here. But once I put the grommets, it'll be a little better here. Yeah, this needs a little more reinforcement on this leaf just for just to prevent it from wearing out too soon. And it could be a little bit tighter around the mast as well. But it's working. But 
batten this. Let's see if I can shape this batten here. Now, once this is tensioned, this batten here should create a, a, a curve right there. And this section here, the, the last two thirds is what's more rigid. And this is the part that flexes. I could have, could have done it with one, just one ply on these uh, ABS pieces, but um, that would have been a little more flexible. And I can still do that, you know, just to experiment with various degrees of wind pressure. So that's all it is, you know, just a area, surface area, flexibility, rigidity, and conditions. Make adjustments, you know, to the to the sailing or flying conditions with your wings and tensioning devices, and you can have uh, various degrees of performance. Yeah, that mast needs to be more rigid, definitely. Double ply on that next time once I get the booms. But the sail, it's got a nice form to it. It's considering it's just a basic, just a basic sail. No special curves. Uh, you know, we could employ some curvature at the leading edges just to give it a little more performance here. But I'm not looking for that right now. I'm just looking for fun. Quick way of getting into this, this stuff here, this, this uh, sport or this activity, weekend activity maybe. Or monthly activity, I don't know, season activity. <sighs> See if we can catch her. That sail so far away.